Hello students, this is Dr. Williamson. I'm the Director of Nursing here at Northeast and we're certainly glad to have you for this acceptance seminar. Uh, today you'll be joined by Mr. Kelly Jones. He's a nursing instructor and he's also the first level coordinator. You'll also uh, hear from Ms. Doling Frazier, a nursing instructor who's our second level coordinator, Ms. Samantha Abercrombie, who's a nursing instructor here at Northeast, and then Ms. Penny Green, who's our nursing department secretary. And you've probably all heard from her before as you were getting your applications in. So thank you for choosing Northeast for your nursing education. We're certainly glad to have you and we welcome you into the program. One of the, the quotes that I wanted to share with you today is one by Walt Disney that says, all your dreams can come true if you have the courage to pursue them. So uh, you're starting out with um, uh, a good start here at Northeast and we wanna provide you the best education that you can get so your dreams uh, can come true. So uh, ESS is something I want to talk with you about first. This is something that uh, you have to do as far as clinical documents, so let's just go right into it. So this is an employment screening service, uh, ESS is, is what it's called, um, but this is where you're going to upload all of your required immunization forms and your healthcare documents, and I'm going to share with those specifically what you're going to be uh, using those for. So uh, to set up your uh, compliant account, you'll need to uh, go to ESS, but they'll send you an email through your Northeast email account. And when they do that, uh, this will be, this will come directly to them. It's gonna say, do not reply at nacc.edu. Uh, if you don't receive this over the next few days, make sure that you check your junk mail uh, because you should be receiving that through your NACC email account. Be sure that you open up your ESS link and set up your account by July 1st uh, because you need to start immediately putting documents in there because it does take a while to get all the documents that you need for uh, beginning in the fall. So you're going to follow the instructions sent to you from ESS on how to set up the account. And after your account is created, you can log into it at any time to access your records or to upload more records, whatever you're needing to do. So uh, the question is that's often asked, do I have to pay to create my ESS account? And uh, the answer is that is paid through your tuition. And so you don't have to do that. Uh, you don't have to pay for it at the time because you've already paid for it. The cost for this, uh, what you'll see on your a bill from Northeast, is going to show that you'll have a $20 compliance set up, $25 for a background check, and you'll have a $35 drug screen. And we'll tell you the time for the drug screen. So what do I submit to ESS? Uh, this is like the folder for all help forms and other documents. So it's going to be things like a physical examination and health questionnaire, proof of vaccination and immunization forms, identification and certification cards like CPR, things like that essential functions document, and I'll tell you about that in a few minutes, and then your influenza vaccine form. And the reason that we have a different date and time for you to submit your influenza vaccine form is because uh, typically you can't get next year's vaccination uh, until later in the fall. So uh, we've put the date that you need to be sure that you have your flu shot, this year's flu shot by September 30th and submit that form. But your other information is gonna be due before that. So how do I get my background check is a question that we commonly get. ESS will send you a link in your email that you'll need to open the link and after opening the link and completing it, it's going to ask you uh, some information related 
to your background check. And once they get that information and you sign uh, saying that you approve for them to do a background check of you, then they will complete the background check. So uh, it's kind of like you have to sign saying it's OK to do one. And to be able to be in the program, you have to comply with that. So when do I get my drug screen? This is a question commonly asked as well. Uh, this will uh, not be before you begin classes in the fall. There's going to be a date and time that's determined later for the drug screens, and these are unannounced. So you've already paid for it. Um, we'll just set the date and time, and we'll show up, and we will do that. Uh, so uh, one day on campus when when you're scheduled to be here, we'll have it. So um, that that is unannounced. So how do I get the forms to submit to ESS? And you're going to receive an email from Miss Green and you'll receive that um, in the next uh, few days. Uh, you'll see it come from uh, Ms. Green's email is greenp at nacc.edu. And it'll have all the forms that you'll need to have completed uh, it, by your health care provider. Uh, so this email will have links. Uh, it'll also have uh, student tips and tricks that's going to help guide you through ESS. So be sure you look through all of that because um, it, sometimes it's a little bit confusing until you read through everything. So uh, be sure you read through everything, but then you can be sure and reach out to Ms. Green if you have questions about it as well. Or if you have, once you get into the program, if you have questions, you can contact ESS and you'll see, I'll share with you the contact information for them in a few minutes. So as you get these forms complete that we're going to be asking you for. As you get those complete, be sure that you go ahead and upload those into uh, ESS, all those clinical documents, because uh, it does take a while. And if you wait until, um, you know, the week before they're all due, sometimes students uh, get into uh, trouble. We don't want you to uh, miss any clinical time or not meet deadlines that are critical. So uh, be sure you do those as soon as you can. You're responsible for submitting everything to SS. You may scan the documents or you can take a clear photo of them with your electronic device or, or phone. And if you have questions, review the ESS student tips and tricks link that Ms. Green is going to email you. Um, so one of the things I want to say going back to this where it says you can scan the documents or make a clear photo. If it's not clear, if it looks blurry to you when you look back at it or after you've submitted and you look back at it and you uh, see the document, be sure that you submit a, another one because they're just going to kick it back to you anyway and say I can't read it. Uh, so be sure that it's uh, signed by everybody that it should be, that it's complete, and that you can actually uh, see the document, whether it's scanned or you make a photo of it. So all documents must be uploaded to ESS by August the 17th. Don't wait till the last week before you begin uploading documents. So go ahead and uh, start submitting them as you get them complete. And so why have I said that now three times? I've said it three times because someone has done that before and it's either caused them to not be able to start clinical. It's put them in a hole right to begin with. And one of your nursing instructors that you'll meet, uh, Miss Bruce, she always taught me when I first started that uh, you needed to start like you could keep up. And so that's what I need to say to you. Start like you can keep up uh, and uh, rise to the challenge of getting this accomplished because it's it's one of your first big tasks. Uh, and it'll say a lot about you, about your um, your skills to be organized and timely, which is very important in the nursing program. So if you have questions about ESS, uh, uploading the documents, anything like that, please contact ESS uh, Essential uh, Department. Uh, their regular business hours are Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 Central Standard. Uh, you see the phone numbers that are listed there. 
um, and then you see the email as well. So uh, when you are contacting them, be sure that you uh, tell them that you're a Northeast Alabama Community College student, uh, that you're a first semester student, give them your first and last name and um, your contact information because they handle, ESS handles a lot of different programs. And so if you don't tell them what school you're affiliated with, it's going to be very difficult uh, for them to track you down. Uh, please contact Ms. Green if you don't receive the forms uh, that I've just told you about that you'll get in the next few days and you see her email there. So uh, I wanted to tell you just uh, a few specifics about what you're going to see. And so um, when it says here again to open your account by July, first and that's coming up in the next few weeks to begin the process but some of the things that you're going to need is uh, you need an MMR series measles mumps and rubella and you've got to uh, show proof of two MMR vaccinations or you've got to have a positive titer um, the reason that we ask you to do all these things it's not just so we can be a pain uh, it's because our facilities, our uh, hospital facilities that we allow you to go into for your clinical experiences. We have contracts with all of those agencies. We have contracts with all the long term care facilities that you get to go to. Uh, we if you go into a school, we have contracts with them. And what those contracts say is that all of our students have had a background check they've had and it's clear they've had a drug screen and it's clear and that all of their immunizations their health records all of these things their cpr everything is up to date and they're all in compliance before we allow them access into the facility and so we've said that in the contract and so that's why it's so important for you to get this completed in a timely manner so back to uh, the MMR, there are two ways to show that you are, you meet that criteria, and that's either to have uh, proof of immunizations or a positive titer. And if you don't have proof of immunizations of your, of your two vaccinations for the MMR, then you can have blood drawn uh, showing that your titer is positive for, um, M for MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella that's showing you are immune and so you don't have to have the vaccinations. I will tell you titers uh, are typically not covered by your insurance and they can be expensive. Uh, an, in, uh, an immunization is much less expensive. So um, keep that in mind and there's no expiration date for an MMR. If you show proof that you've had an MMR, then that's good forever. Uh, influenza vaccine, we've already talked about that and that is due to be in a little bit later by September 30th. A Tdap, that's uh, tetanus, uh, diphtheria and pertussis. It's not just the tet tetanus. It is tetanus plus diphtheria plus pertussis. You have to have a booster of that within the past 10 years and uh, show us of that. You have to have the uh, two-step TB skin test and that's done yearly. Once you have the initial two-step TB skin test and we give you the in the tips and tricks section, we tell you uh, when that's due, but your healthcare provider will know that as well uh, because it's going to be, um, uh, there has to be a certain amount of time between uh, when you have that done and we include that on your sheet when we're doing that. So, and it even gives you an example of how you get it. So be sure you follow those closely and make sure to where that it's filled out correctly on there. Also a hepatitis B series or a titer. Uh, you can also uh, decline to have that, but if you're going to be in the healthcare field, <clears throat> 
uh, I would advise you and you're going to find out that most of your facilities that you are going to be employed by are really going to advise you uh, because you have a uh, you'll be dealing with blood um, for the rest of your career and so you need to be sure that you're immune to hepatitis B. Uh, the varicella uh, series and the titer as well is something that you've got to uh, show proof that you've had that. Um, also, some students will say, well, I had chicken pox before. I never had to have the vaccine because I had chicken pox. Well, a verbal account of chicken pox or mumps or I mean, measles, mumps and rubella, uh, you know, you can't just say I've had them before. In those cases, you either have to uh, show us a positive titer showing that you're immune to it or you have to take the vaccination. So um, we have to show have proof of that one way or the other. The next thing is the essential functions form. And on the essential functions form, it's kind of self-explanatory, but uh, I think we talked about that a little bit for those of you who came into the uh, the pre-nursing seminars and you would have seen that, but with the essential functions form, it uh, it shows things like sensory perception, communication, cognitive, critical thinking, motor function, um, go further, professional behavior. And what we're asking, we ask for two things on here. We ask that you say, that you have read through that and yes you can meet all these essential functions and then we ask that your health care provider whether it be an md a do a pa or an np whichever one it is that they can verify and are willing to sign saying that you can meet all of this criteria as well so there are some physical cognitive communication sensory perception several different things that you have to say that you're able to meet in order to participate in the program. Um, so, and then just a few other things that are pretty self-explanatory is uh, the CPR, uh, your insurance information, photo ID, you have to sign for the background check and you have to sign for the drug screen. So all of these things have to either be uh, you have to get them through your health care provider and have them sign for it, or uh, you have to upload it if you have like your insurance card, photo ID, and it's going to tell you that. Once you get that, ESS is going to check that off a little document and they'll quit sending you emails that say, hey, you still are lacking your Tdap. Um, you don't have your uh, varicella series, they'll quit sending you emails when you get in compliance with that. Otherwise, you're going to see that you haven't completed that and you've got to com finish completing that. And when I say complete ESS by the due date, um, it means all of these things by the due date. The only thing when you start to school in the fall, the only thing you should be lacking is your influenza vaccine. Uh, documented allergy to the influenza vaccine is the only accepted reason for declination. And so keep that in mind when it comes time to have that, uh, because to be in our facilities, uh, they want our students. We have to sign uh, showing that our students have been vaccinated. If a student does decline, uh, it's uh, the hospital's prerogative to uh, say whether they will allow the student to work in certain units or they may require the student to wear a mask the whole time they're in. Of course, you know, what's the difference between that and COVID-19 right now? We're all wearing masks. Uh, so, uh, but just keep that in mind uh, as you're uh, getting ready with your paperwork. So the documentation is required to be submitted and complete no later than August 17th. So write that in bold on your calendar and be sure all your plans include getting all that health information done throughout the summer before August 17th so that can be checked off your list. So next up is Mr. Kelly Jones and he's going to talk with you about a uh, tuition and fees estimate. Mm -hmm. 
Hello students, this is Mr. Jones here. Um, I was just going to go over the tuition and fees estimates with you um, for the nursing program. Tuition um, here at Northeast is $160 per credit hour. Um, for the first semester of your nursing program, you'll be enrolled in Nursing 112, which is foundations or the fundamentals of nursing. It is a seven hour course. So you can just estimate what your tuition would be according to seven times 160. Um, in addition to your tuition, we have a few other expenses that are going to be following along with you. We have to have some liability insurance and that just covers us and you as we go into the clinical setting, which includes our long-term care facilities and our acute care facilities. We have several long-term care facilities where we have contracts with that we will be going in and out of. We'll have some first semester um, fundamentals and skills in long-term care. And then in your third semester of nursing school, we'll have um, a preceptorship for about 45 hours. Um, you will be in long-term care working one-on-one -on -one with a nurse. So this liability insurance just covers you, um, the college, and us. Um, I think Dr. Williamson has covered your ESS drug screen, background check, credentialing. Um, as you can see that you have a drug screen, $35 each fall. Um, background check is just $25, a one-time fee. You'll have credentialing um, through ESS, which is a $20 one-time fee. And then you see shadow health for $189, and this is subject to change. This is a virtual um learning mod modality that we use we use it for some pharmacology and we use um, a large portion for your health assessment skills uh, looking over onto the right hand side of the screen you can see that we have lippincott resources we have for the fall which will be the incoming fall fall 2020 one thousand and fifteen dollars this will cover several resources and we'll get into what all it covers on the next slide. But in the spring of 2021, starting in January, you'll pay $765. Together, $1775. That will cover all of your books and resources through Lip and Cot that you will need to complete the program. Um, the next item is ATI. ATI is, um, we will use ATI for testing purposes. There is one test that we'll take at the end of each semester. Um, so therefore you'll have five exams. We also have some case studies and um, some skills, videos and educational resources that we'll use in the first semester. So um, ATI is a product that um, has been around for um, quite some time uh, and we are actually using more of the ATI resource this coming fall with you. Right. We have a physical and vaccines and this is just an estimate of 300 to 500 dollars. You'll have your physical perform before you um, begin the nursing program. It's something that you will upload to ESS as well as your vaccines or titers and Dr. Williamson has spoke to those. Um, uniforms and lab coat. This is just an estimate of $200. We strongly encourage um, students to purchase one lab coat and two uniforms and a uniform includes your pants and your top. Okay. We have a stethoscope. We have an estimate of $50. Pen light, an estimate of $4. Scissors, bandage scissors, an estimate of $3 and then a blood pressure cuff as an estimate of $25. Um, with three of your five semesters, you will have a nursing kit we, um, that we will use in the lab for the fall. In your first semester in nursing 112, your nursing kit is $75. For the spring in nursing 113, your nursing lab kit is $104.50. And then in the fall of your second um, second level 
um, rotation, your nursing kit will be $40. Now, as of now, those prices um, are subject to change, but those are the best estimates that we can provide you at this time. Electronic resources and textbooks. Beginning in the fall of 2020, we will be utilizing Lippincott for our um, textbooks slash electronic resources. With Lippincott, you are provided um, Course Point Plus for Weber Health Assessment, Course Point Plus for Med Math, Course Point Plus for Fundamentals, you will also purchase DocuCare, and DocuCare is an electronic health record that is similar to what you will be using in the hospitals um, during our clinical rotation, as well as once you graduate. We have Lippincott Advisor, which is kind of like um, a medical dictionary for you to Google things, and it helps with medications. It helps you define words that you're just unclear of. Um, but Lippincott Advisor is a great resource for doing care plans um, and also looking up meds prior to administration. And then we have virtual simulations and the virtual simulations that are with your fall pack will include um, health assessment simulations that we'll utilize in lab and um, fundamental simulations that we will also utilize in the lab as well as some practice math problems that we can assign you throughout the semester. In the spring of 2021, you will purchase Course Point Plus Med Surge, um, Course Point Plus Mental Health, Course Point Plus for Maternity and Pediatrics, as well as simulations for each of those. Um, in the med surge, I think there's 10 to 15 simulations. Mental health, um, I don't believe that you will have access to the simulations. We have um, shadow health, mental health for you, and then we will have the maternity, maternity and pediatric simulations for you. Um, all of your resources will be electronic, so you will get a code um, from the bookstore whenever you purchase your books. So you actually won't have a hard textbook in your hands. Everything will be electronic. So you can put it on your desktop at home, your iPad, your laptop. Um, and some of these textbooks can even be downloaded to your cell phone to where you can have access to them at the touch of your fingertips. Um, textbooks that are purchased in the first year of the program will be utilized throughout the entire program. And your DocuCare subscription is available for 24 months. So whenever we purchase our DocuCare in the fall of 112 or the fall of 2020, it will last you the entire course of the program. FAFSA or your Pell Grants. So um, nursing school costs a lot, right? Um, so for your FAFSA and Pell Grant, if you qualify, because of the resources that we utilize, the lab coats, all of the supplies that are required to be in our nursing program. The first semester, if you're accustomed to receiving um, money back from your Pell Grant, unfortunately, the nursing program, it takes all of that money to pay for your textbooks your uniforms, your pen light, your stethoscope, your shoes, because we have to have certain shoes for the nursing program, um, as well as your subscriptions to DocuCare and um, things like that. So from the Pell Grant money, there is no money left over as it is used for your extra expenses. However, Pell Grant is year round, um, and it also will include next summer because we do have class in the summer. So you will be um, eligible for Pell Grant throughout the entire portion of your program. Um, but I do want to go ahead and let you know up front, there will be some out of um, out of pocket expenses. Um, gas to and from the facilities. Um, we utilize four facilities for the acute care hospital. We use one in Scottsboro, one in Fort Payne, a facility in Boaz and a facility in ARAB. So we do travel um, 
to these different locations to have clinical and to go to all four locations. It's just giving you a good clinical experience while you are in our program. Um, tuition and fees. Um, you can look on NACC.edu to see the tuition costs that we've provided you. You can reach out to financial aid. If you'll go to NACC.edu across the top, there's a tab that says financial aid. It will put you in contact with everyone that works in the financial aid department, either from their phone number extension to their email address. So you should be able to get in contact with someone in financial aid. Um, it's very important that you get your um, classes paid for up front. Canvas, which is the learning management system that we use here at Northeast, Canvas will not let you have access to your classes until your tuition is paid. So be sure to um, check in with financial aid to make sure you qualify and that it's being utilized. Um, make sure that if you're paying out of pocket for all of your classes, that you set up a date and time to come up to the business office to pay for your tuition. All right, and with that, my portion of this presentation is complete, I believe. I'm going to let Ms. Abercrombie speak to you about ordering supplies and scrubs. Hey class, again, I want to welcome y'all to the nursing program. So I'm going to pick up with where Mr. Jones left off and we're going to talk about ordering supplies, textbooks, uniforms, etc. So our ordering deadline is set for Tuesday, July 7th. Um, and that ordering entails your two sets of scrubs that Mr. Jones talked about. Uh, you're going to have one lab coat and your nursing kits. All of that must be purchased from the bookstore. There's no exceptions to that. In addition to that, you also need a stethoscope, your pen light, and a blood pressure cuff. You can either purchase those from the bookstore or you can purchase those on your own. That's your decision. You almost also must have a washable cloth mask, and that mask must be of neutral color with no embroidery customization at all to that. When we say neutral color, that means uh, black, white, navy, khaki, um, but nothing bright. And then also your living cot resources, your deadline to purchase those is July 7th as well. Okay. Okay, so on ordering uniforms, there is a tutorial on Dove Apparel website and the link is posted below. And this just goes into great detail on how you can measure yourself um, to get the proper size. So you're going to complete the measurement by either going to the website um, or you can click the link to the right of the screen. You're going to complete the ordering form uh, from the NACC bookstore and that will be um, emailed to you all by Mrs. Green. So get that order form completed. On that order form, you're going to be able to order your uniform along with all the resources that are necessary, such as your stethoscope, your nursing kit. Um, if you want to order the blood pressure cuff through the nursing, um, through the bookstore, that's available as well and will be on the uniform. OK, so you're going to complete the order form and then submit it to Mrs. Green and her email is on the slide, but it is greenp at NACC.edu. And again, it's very important to get all of that submitted by July 7th. OK, and now I'm going to turn things over to Mrs. Frazier. Hey class, this is Ms. Frazier. Um, I'm going to be uh, talking to you for a few minutes here. The, the slide that you see here is the 2020 nursing curriculum. Your first semester, uh, you'll have your nursing 112 is your fundamental concept of, of nursing. Second semester, if you when you successfully complete your nursing 112, you will move on to your nursing to your second semester of nursing 113. Um, and then your third semester, nursing 114 and 115, that's your summer semester. 
And then after a uh, successful completion of the third semester, you will be eligible to take um, your NCLEX for your PN certification. And then the fourth semester, which will be the, the following fall, um, will be in nursing 211. And then the fifth semester is uh, in nursing 221 advanced evidence based clinical reasoning. OK, um, so your first semester, your required courses. Uh, so the so in your first semester, you will take nursing 112. You will either have taken or you will need to take and be successful in math 100 and biology 201 um, that same semester. If you have completed your math and your biology 201, then that's good. You would not have to take that again. If you have not uh, taken those, you need to be taking them at this time. If you have any questions uh, regarding those two classes, please speak with your advisor. And then grades in nursing. Um, there you will have a grade blueprint for each course. Um, this will be available in your syllabus and you will see this on the first day of your nursing orientation. Um, you will have a syllabus or a guideline and in that syllabus you will have a breakdown of your uh, semester grade and it will include like um, your the percentage of your unit exam, the percentage of your final exam and other assignments that would be averaged into your grade for that semester. You must achieve a 75% average to progress to the next nursing course, so be sure that you note that because in some of your classes prior to this, you a 70 or 72, you may have been able to pass, but in nursing, you must achieve a 75% to be successful and to progress to the next course. Grades are not rounded until the final grade and when we get to your um, orientation, your first day of orientation, there you'll have a policy, a printout of this with some examples, and that will make a little bit more sense to you as far as how we uh, round your grades. Remember that your clinical is a pass fail. Uh, it is not, you do not get a, a grade that it would be averaged into your theory grade, so you're, you, you must be successful in clinical, but it is a separate grade. Your DocuCare, which is a, um, a portion of the electronic health record that you will complete uh, in nursing school, and it is also a required clinical component, and it is graded as a satisfactory or an unsatisfactory, but you do not get a number grade that is averaged in to your, um, to your class grade. Class meets on Mondays and Thursdays, and the times um, will be announced later. Bring your electronic device to class, whether you have a laptop or um, a, whatever you have, just be sure that you bring your electronic device to class. August the 24th is the first day of class. Uh, plan to be on campus every day, Monday through Friday of this week. Clinical lab. Um, with clinical lab, it, we have a 90 hours, 90 contact hours that is required. Um, we plan and we hope that the majority of this will be on campus, but um, with times like this, we don't know. So we have here that they may be on campus and some may be, may be completed virtually. When you get your calendar, um, the first day of class probably or, or soon, um, the dates and the times of your lab will be posted on, on, the, ca on the calendar. Lab attendance is required 100% of time, and just meaning that if you're sick, of course, we don't want you to come to lab, but uh, your labs will have to be made up if you do miss. Your name badge is required 100% of the time when you're in the clinical lab and the clinical facilities. And the dress code is the same um, on the days that you come to campus for lab. The dress code will be the same as when you're going to the clinical facilities and dress code will be ad will be addressed a little uh, further on the first day of class. Clinicals, there's re uh, required 45 contact clinical hours. Typically, these are done uh, in your first semester. They're done or they're completed in long term care. Um, due to uncertain times, we may have to adapt. Again, some of these may be done virtually. 
Uh, dates and assigned groups will be posted on on your calendar. So the first day of class, when you get your calendar, um, you will see the dates that you are assigned to clinical and uh, the groups. Clinical instructor will discuss start and stop times. Um, after you are noted to what group you are in and assigned a clinical instructor, some facilities um, want students there earlier, so we just so that time will be up to the clinical instructor. Sometimes we start at six, and some facilities don't want the students there till six thirty, so um, the times will vary. Further discussion will, uh, will, will again be given to you closer to clinical dates. And attendance in clinical setting is required 100% of time, just like I mentioned in the lab. Um, again, we don't want you to re report to clinical sick, but um, if you miss a clinical rotation, then that time does have to be made up. The dress code. Um, you will when you come to campus and when you come to when you come to campus lab and when you come to clinical, you will wear your NACC designated scrubs. Again, we want these. We expect these to be clean and pressed. You'll wear solid black leather shoes with black socks. Your scrub jacket is to be worn over your scrubs while on campus. Your hair is to be styled away from the face. If you have long hair, it must be secured. It must be pulled up. Hair color must be natural to humans. Facial hair must conform to the facility policy that you are assigned. Fingernails, artificial nails or acrylics are not allowed in the clinical setting. Tattoos are not visible, um, are not to be visible during the clinical facility. So if you have a tattoo that is visible, uh, we will have to cover that before you can go onto the units. Your name tag again must be worn on your scrub or if you wear a lab jacket, you can, uh, wear your name tag on your lab jacket. Gum and smoking is not permitted in uniform. And again, the dress code will be further addressed during your fall nursing orientation. Um, and then if you have any questions, you have um, the NACC uh, email address here and you can contact us or you can make an appointment with your advisor through advisor track and then um, you can see here that we will have some live question and answer dates you can see the dates and times posted okay and i'm turning it back over to dr williamson So thanks to uh, all the faculty for all the great information for you all. And as uh, Ms. Frazier said, we will have some dates that are listed here where you can join. We'll send you a link uh, to join and uh, you can join access through Microsoft Teams. And you do have a, a free subscription to this through your Northeast uh, email account and through Microsoft. So you'll be able to access that. We put some different times on there throughout the uh, next few weeks where that we thought that you could log in at your convenience and ask any questions that you might have after you review the PowerPoint and listen to all of this. Uh, in closing, I did want to say that these are unusual times for us and uh, we're having to do some things differently. Uh, it's been a little bit challenging for us, but uh, just as you can rise to the challenge, we can rise to the challenge as well. Uh, this is an exciting time to be a nurse. There's lots of good focus on uh, the good work that nurses do. And so uh, it is a good time to go into nursing uh, because you can really see what the uh, profession is all about, that it's very rewarding um, and really nurses are healthcare heroes. And so uh, it is one of those things that it's it's good to uh, go into. But I do want to say that this is what we do. And so um, you may, we'll do everything we can to uh, make sure that uh, you are as safe as possible, that you know good practice procedures as far as putting on your PPE and things like that. Um, but any time that you're going into a healthcare 
uh, setting, uh, we do take on some risk. That's why we uh, we talk about the requirements of uh, having vaccinations and the requirements for our health because it's no longer just about us. It's primarily about our patients that we take care of. So I want to say that to you that it is, um, you know, that's one of those things about becoming a nurse that is very important for you to know and realize that uh, it's it's a service profession. It's uh, about others. It's about taking care of others. So uh, during these uh, times, we just kind of have to adapt and uh, learn and move on. And so that's what I would encourage you to be thinking about as we move into the fall semester. Again, we are so glad to have you. Thank you for choosing uh, NACC and we'll be talking with you soon.